All right, let's start by building our first C program. I'm going to create a new folder here where I'm going to store all the C programming codes. So the name of the folder can be anything. I'm going to say C programming codes. Doesn't matter, you can name it anything. And now I'm going to open my VS code where I'm going to load this folder. So all I have to do, I have to drag this folder here in my VS code. There you go, you can see the folder name here. Now let's start by creating first C program here. So if you want to write your C program, you need to create a file that has the extension .c. Here I'm going to name it, let's say hello or whatever you wish to like try here, it's going to work. Let's say I'm going to try test.c. So the extension has to be .c here. And now here we can start writing our C program. So how does a basic C program look like? Let me start with that one. First of all, let's say if you want to give some sort of output, when you run this program, you want to see something as an output. In this case, for an example, the very usual one that people try, let's say I want to show output this hello world in the terminal. So in this case, it's a sequence of characters. You can see H, E, L, L. There are a lot of characters here. This is what we call as a string. Now, later on in this course, you are going to learn a lot about string. But for now, all you need to know, if you have a sequence of characters, that's called a string. And if you want to print string, then you need a function called printf. So printf is a function in C program that can help you to print something. Now, how the function look like? Let me show you here. This is the printf function that I'm talking here. Now, how do you know whether this is a function? Well, all the function, they do some sort of specific task. Here, the printf function has a specific task to print something in the terminal. Now, this printf, uh, like, it has parentheses. You can see this is how you can identify any function. Function will have some keywords and then they will have this round bracket or parentheses, whatever you say. Now here we can print the hello world. So let's try printing the hello world. But unfortunately, this is a string and you cannot print it just like this way. If you want to print a string, you have to put that inside double quotation. So remember, here is one more lesson for you. If you want to print a string, you have to put that inside double quotation. Now that's all for now. Now if you want to run this program, you cannot run it like this way because any C program must have the main function in order to run a program. So what we're basically missing, we can have thousands of functions, there is no problem at all, but the one function that we must need, that's called the main function. So let's start creating our main function here. This is the main function, it's something I'm not creating, basically it's something C program is uh, created for us already, and I'm using that function here, the main function. Again, the main function is the entry point of a C program. And here with this curly brace, the C program or the main function basically start and with this curly brace, this main function basically ends. And in between these curly braces, you can put your logic, whatever you want to do. So let me put uh, this printf that I want to print something. Now this is a statement. You are trying to say, hey, I want to print hello world. In the end of any statement, you have to use a semicolon here. That's another important thing. Later on, you'll get used to with this, but right now, that's the basic things you need to know. Any C program must have this main function because this is the entry point. And then you can have multiple functions like this. There is no problem with that, but you must have this main function in order to run any C program. If you have thousands of functions, doesn't matter, it will always start from the main function. Now, in order to work with this printf function, basically, well, it is something already created for us. This printf function, what is the task of this printf function? Basically, it prints something. Now, how the printf function is basically working, everything is defined inside a header file. So if this printf function you want to use, then in this case, you have to include the header file where basically this printf function is created and stored. So in this case, I'm going to use hash include. With the help of this hash include keyword, you can include any header file. Now the header file that I want to include, there are many header files exist in C program. The one I want to include called stdo.h. Well, basically it means standard input output and header. So standard input output dot header 
this basically basically generate a lot of function that we can use in our C program well for an example this printf belongs to this header there are some many other functions like this let's say scanf get character put character so anything related to input output basically this studio.h handles this header handles everything that is related to input output so here printf is an output function that's going to help us to output something in our terminal so that's all for now well you can leave a lot of space doesn't matter if you allow more space here that's not a bigger issue well that's a very basic c program we have so again i'm going to repeat main is the function that you must need in order to run your c program then the function start with the curly brace and then the function ends with the curly brace in between the function you can put whatever it's up to you i have used one print if it doesn't mean that's the only line you can use you can use anything here now the last and most important thing is here if the printf is something you are using then which header it belongs you have to mention it you have to include that in the c program that's what i'm doing here so this printf is already created in this header that's what i'm saying i'm using this printf from this header this function will return something when it is finished when it has done its work in this case you will often see that i'm using this return zero now what does this return zero basically do it's a success indicator it gives a signal to the operating system hey this program has executed successfully and it is terminating without any errors so that's what basically it says to the operating system everything went right everything went successful nothing to worry here but after running this program if you see anything except zero then basically it means there was something wrong there were some errors so that's basically the task of this return zero so this is a statement that you are going to use after whatever logic you want to use and it's going to be the last line of your program or last line of this main function that's what basically normally you will see quite often now that's all so this function is going to return zero now zero is an integer number so function is going to return an integer number and that's why just because of the name just before the name of the function you have to define the return type now for now you don't have to memorize anything but at least the basic structure that's the basic structure you need to know again let me just remove this line so this will be your everyday things from now on you will need to create this basic structure every time and i'm sure you understand what basically is happening here in this code base so we have this main function where the uh, c program is going to start and then you have this opening curly brace basically here the main function is going to start and you have the ending curly brace where the main function is going to end and the last line of your program is going to be return zero basically which will tell the operating system that everything went successful there were no errors now here your logic will go here the logic goes so whatever you want to do you can do it here here the logic goes now what do I want it to do after running this program I wanted to show something in the terminal it's going to be let's say hello world I can run the program right now let me show you what happened so here the program is running and you don't see any output let me just take it to the uh, right side of the panel here I'm going to show all the output on right hand side so that you can see everything well now at this moment if I run this program again you don't really see any output here there is nothing because we are not printing anything so let me use the printf function let me say hello world that's it remember every statement must needs to end with this semicolon let me remove this line if you don't understand what's happening with this line but at least now you can explain this program to anybody what's happening here I think that's all let me run this program again and let's see what happened this time we can see there is some sort of output here and it's called hello world I'm sure you can see it clearly now you can print multiple line here let's say hello world I am I'm learning C programming C program or I'm learning C that's all and now let me run this program again and let's see what happened so we can see here the output hello world I am learning C great now I'm sure 
you know how to run your or you know how to create your first C program, how to run your C program and how to show some output in the terminal. So again, I'm going to review everything for you. Whenever you are going to create your next, next C program, remember to at least have this basic structure. So this is your basic structure and then you can add anything, anything you can do here inside the main function. But all you will do always, integer main function is a function that you are going to use from where your C program basically will start. This is the entry point of your program. And inside the main function, you will have return zero in the end of the function. So again, I repeat, after this function, you are not going to add anything, but this statement is going to be the last statement of your C program. You can have anything here, thousands of lines, but always this has to be the last line of your main function if you are using this return zero. And you will have this hash include studio.h always because most of the time, of course, you are going to show something on the screen. So you are going to show something on the terminal. You know, there will be some sort of output and input involved in your C program. So that's all. Let me go back and again, let me bring this printf here. I'm going to stop and I'm sure you are going to practice this. So you can take a challenge now. You can print your name, you can print your email and you can print your address. Can you do this for me? Let's give it a try.